Hey guys welcome back to your channel, I am back with another One Piece video. In the SBS volume 107 Oda Sensei gave information about Bonnie's devil fruit, shared some intriguing sword related tidbits, delved into Vegapunk's satellite inspiration, and even touched on Luffy's dream. But before we dive into all this juicy content, I have something important to share. I'm feeling a bit down because even though you watch my videos, many of you forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It would mean the world to me if you could show some love by giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Your support really makes a difference. Let's first talk about Bonnie Devil Fruit. We know that her Devil Fruit allows her to manipulate her age and others age at will. From the get-go, this Devil Fruit seemed incredibly overpowered. The first time we got a peek at this mysterious Devil Fruit power was during the Sabayati Archipelago arc. In that moment, we saw Bonnie using her ability to change the ages of marines while fighting with them. As the story progressed, we discovered even more amazing abilities of this devil fruit. During Egghead Arc, we saw the fact that Bonnie could remove the age of someone from their body or even turn them into a different version of themselves using her power. She could turn herself into a muscular being that resemble like buccaneer race, and she can even turn someone into an alternate personality, just as she did with Luffy and Chopper making them look older, and she turned Jinbei into a kid. The ability of this devil fruit is incredibly overpowered. In SBS Volume 107 Oda Sensei revealed the name of this devil fruit to be the Toshi Toshi no Mai, or the Age Age Fruit. Now let's talk about Sword and the backstories of Sword members. In Chapter 1081 we got to know that the Sword member are those who have already submitted their resignation. They can ignore any orders they choose, and Navy doesn't take any responsibilities of their actions. But in SBS Oda Sensei gave some input about, Sword functionality means how they work. According to Oda Sensei, all members of Sword are still Marines. In fact, they can even be promoted or demoted, just like any regular Marine. But the unique thing is that Sword members willingly hand in their resignations. The Marines don't accept these resignations right away. They only let them go when something happens, and the Marines no longer want to be responsible for them. Oda Sensei even revealed the backstories of Sword members, starting with Prince Gruz. As a child he was very gloomy, and he was also a bit clumsy as he always bumping into things wherever he went. Just like any caring mother looking out for her child, Gruz's mom gave him a really long hat to help him avoid bumping into things. After wearing that long hat, he didn't bump into things anymore because the hat would hit things before he did, preventing him from getting hurt. This doesn't really change much about Prince Gruz as a character, but it does show a lovely connection with his mom, and Oda Sensei even told that he was a bit shy. Oda Sensei revealed some interesting backstories about Hibari. We One Piece fan only know the fact that Hibari is a lieutenant, and she is also deeply in love with Kobe. But this isn't surprising. When she was young, Kobe rescued her from a chaotic battlefield. Sadly, she lost her bear on the battlefield, and it meant a lot to her. Kobe then returned to the battlefield and ignored all the orders of his superiors just to return her treasure back to her. After a few days, he came back, a bit battered but with the bear safe. This became the reason why she fell in love with him, and she ended up naming the bear as Kobe Senpai. In One Piece SBS Volume 107, we learned something interesting about Kyujaku. We recently saw her fighting on a pirate island. Kyujaku has a powerful sword called Beethoven, which has a Japanese pun that roughly means military combat whip. This sword is made of strong steel and can even split rocks. When she combines it with her devil fruit power, it can do amazing things, like moving things as she moves buildings, which is quite an amazing ability. In SBS Volume 107 Oda Sensei mentioned about inspiration behind of Vegapunk satellites. For Pythagoras, one of the six satellites of Vegapunk, he taken inspiration from a popular Japanese TV show called Ganbare Robocon. Oda also got an idea from a character named Gyron Amos in Combat Mecha Zabungle. He used this inspiration to create a character named Gyron in the Revolutionary Army, who was introduced in the story when Sabo arrived in the Kamabaka Kingdom after the events in Luluja. Finally let's talk about Luffy Dream. In One Piece SBS Volume 107, Oda talked about Luffy's dream. Fans asked if Caribou, who was on the Straw Hat ship when Luffy shared his dream with his crew, also knows about it. Oda explained that Caribou doesn't know Luffy's dream because he didn't hear that part properly. The only people who know about Luffy's dream right now are the Straw Hat Pirates. Sabo, Shanks, Rayleigh, and Yamato. The Straw Hat Pirates heard it directly from Luffy. Shanks heard Luffy talk about his dream when he was a child, and Rayleigh was told by Shanks himself. Yamato learned about Luffy's dream from Ace, who has passed away. And, of course, there's Sabo, who knows Luffy's goal because Luffy declared it in front of him when they were kids. Just like Caribou, us One Piece fans are also unaware of Luffy's true dream. We're eagerly waiting for it to be revealed. Hopefully, in the story, we'll get to hear Luffy's real dream soon, just like those other characters did. 
So friends that's for the today video, see you guys in the next video. But before you go don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you are new to the channel.